the two uh, classical uh, clinical and lab findings associated with lead poisoning uh, can be summarized in just a couple of phrases, lead lines and basophilic stippling. Lead lines, if you're a uh, dentist or a family practitioner, refer to little linear hyperpigmentation of the gingiva that occur with people with chronic lead poisoning. If you're a radiologist, lead lines has a different meaning altogether. It refers to a density in the distal portion of the bone, the uh, distal metathesis, which is hyperdense. And these are what uh, lead lines mean to a radiologist. And this is what lead lines mean to somebody who's examining the oral cavity. If you're a pathologist or a hematologist, uh, you may see basophilic stippling in the erythrocytes. Basophilic stippling in red cells are little uh, residual portions of uh, uh, RNA ribosomes uh, that show that the lead has interfered with the proper development of the red cell. Of course, a basophilic stippling is not unique for lead poisoning. Another common place that it's seen is in the um, sideroblastic anemias, which we'll be getting into in the uh, chapter soon to follow uh, on red cells, uh, which are the, uh, the sideroblastic anemias are uh, pre-leukemic uh, conditions. Another radiologic finding with uh, lead poisoning may be little particles of lead material that you might see in the stomach region or in the uh, bowel. And uh, in this case, the abnormality is not in the bone, but it's uh, these little hyperdense deposits, which you might see in the person who has ingested lead particles, lead paints. And of course, remember, neuropathies, as we said, were very, very common with uh, lead poisoning, chronic lead intoxication. So here's somebody with wrist drop, and you know that's really due to a radial, uh, neurop radial nerve neuropathy, isn't it? Uh, let's get into another type of exposure uh, in a classical sense is radiation exposure. I, I spent many years of my life studying and writing and uh, diagnosing radiation and related things. Now I think I'm going to summarize it in about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, I think you know the classic concepts of uh, half-life. It's uh, basically the time at which half of an isotope has decayed no matter what type of decay there is. Uh, originally, the amount of radioactivity in terms of uh, disintegrations per time unit was uh, described as the Curie, and still is, Curies, millicuries. Nowadays, uh, it, the more politically correct people would be more likely to use the term Becquerel. So we dishonored Madame Curie, and we honored another guy named Becquerel. So now what was formerly uh, a millicurie is now expressed as generally mega becquerels, and all they refer to as uh, disintegrations per second or time unit. Ionizing radiation is radiation which delivers um, mass particles into the tissue, even if they're electrons or beta particles, perhaps neutrons, uh, alpha particles. Non-ionizing radiation is radiation chiefly of photons in which there is no significant ionization occurring. Uh, yes, some high-energy nonparticulate radiation could be ionizing, but for the most part, ionizing means particles, non-ionizing means relatively pure, relatively lower energy photons. Uh, so particulate radiation are things like uh, beta uh, particles, which are electrons, uh, alpha particles, which are two protons and two neutrons, perhaps neutrons, particulate radiation. Non-particulate radiation is very easy. All that is is a higher energy electromagnetic spectrum photons, such as ultraviolet, such as uh, x-rays, such as gamma rays. The uh, degree of energy is often expressed in terms of keV or MeV for kilo electron volts or uh, milli ele uh, mega <laughs> electron volts, I'm sorry. Um, and that is purely related to the wavelength of the particle. So it would be just as easy to call something a wavelength rather than KEV or MEV. But in terms of radiation dosimetry, 
uh, KEV and MEV are more commonly used. There's a concept of linear energy transfer, or LET, and that's the amount of uh, uh, energy that's transferred into tissue. And uh, the uh, radiation oncologists will use this term sometime. You're not likely to see it on any of your uh, reports from your patients. And of course, there's something called the relative biologic effect, or RBE. And uh, you might think of that as a relative effects. In other words, uh, so much energy delivered to a bone or a brain or a bone marrow or a spleen or a skin will have different effects relative to what kind of tissue it is. And of course, you may have heard the term LD50 or lethal dose 50, and that's usually expressed in the time range. So in other words, a certain amount of radiation will have a lethal effect for 50% of its subjects at a certain time interval. So you might want to determine what the LD50 is at 60 days for rats if you're doing some type of experiment. Uh, as we said before, some tissues are more sensitive to radiation than others. Generally speaking, the cells which turn over faster are more sensitive to radiation changes. Uh, cells which normally don't turn over, like brain and skeletal muscle, are relatively resistant to radiation. Uh, if you want to know the single most radio-sensitive cell in your body, just look at a peripheral smear and look at a regular old lymphocyte. Uh, these are the cells which are most sensitive to radiation. They also have a relatively high turnover as well. And um, even if you get a relatively high degree of radiation delivered to your body, it's not likely that any of your common lab tests will be abnormal, with the exception of perhaps uh, a drop in your lymphocyte count. Let's talk about dosimetry. In the old days, uh, we just talked about RADS, and uh, that was probably the best term to use then and even now. Uh, a RAD is generally like a Rentgen, but a Rentgen was originally defined to be a unit of charge produced, whereas RAD is talking about amount of energy in a tissue. So classically, a RAD was 100 ergs of energy per gram of tissue. And then somebody decided to, uh, some physicists decided to make it a little more pure. And now they talk about REMS and grays and sieverts. I think overall, I think you still probably still use RAD as your uh, dose. And it's more likely that when you look at some of the uh, reports on your patients who've had radiation therapy, they'll still use the word uh, RAD or perhaps uh, sievert. But here's the, here, here's the thing to remember. A RAD is a REM and a gray is a sievert. So, uh, one sievert is 100 rems, and one gray is 100 rads, and one rad is about a rem. So just keep that in mind, and if you don't, just remember rads is basically the same, is the best term to use. Uh, let's talk about the acute effects of radiation. Well, what is the acute effect of ionizing radiation? Uh, radiation that has uh, particles or is very high energy. One thing it does, it uh, splits up a lot of the common molecules like water and creates free radicals. And we've spent a lot of time talking about the extreme uh, dangerous uh, effects of free radicals. Another thing radiation does is it breaks up DNA. It actually chops up the DNA molecule. The place that's most likely to cleave, if you're into chemistry, is the actual sugar phosphate bond. And of course, radiation, because you know it causes cancer, and we'll be talking about that, actually uh, has a deleterious effect on the uh, protective P53 gene. So uh, basically, radiation uh, takes a threefold uh, level of damage into tissue uh, acutely. Uh, let's talk about whole body radiation. There are, uh, if, if you want to know how much acute whole body radiation will kill you, the human LD50 at six weeks is between two and a half to four grays. So in other words, if you've got about three grays delivered to your whole body acutely, like right now, 50% uh, of you would be dead in six weeks. And I'll tell you, the other 50% would be awfully damn sick. In terms of sickness, the uh, 
the hematopoietic system is the most sensitive for acute whole body radiation and the central nervous system because it has low turnover of cells is the most resistant so if you would like to uh, describe a spectrum of changes from the hematologic to the central nervous system we'll do that in the next uh, batch the next clip thank you very much